I think this is it for all the panelists. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. Hello and welcome to the BRIC 2022 Summit from the Classroom to the Studio with Nickelodeon and Burbank High School. It's my pleasure to introduce Carson Smith, Vice President Community Outreach of the Nickelodeon Community Effort, who will be introducing the rest of the panelists. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you to all of you guys for joining us today. I know it's a Saturday morning, so we appreciate that. Um, I want to start off by saying that this is a discussion about teaching. And so for any teachers out there, we want to tip our hats to you. Uh, this past two years has been, you've been tasked with a Herculean and maybe sometimes a Sisyphean uh, ordeal to, um, to keep our kids up and running and moving and learning and, and surviving and also becoming productive members of this our society. So thank you, our hats off to all teachers everywhere, um, Burbank, LA, and the rest of the world. You guys are rock stars. So having said that, um, we've already introduced myself, so I'm going to let everyone go around. We'll start with Janelle. Um, Janelle, tell us who you are, what you do, maybe a couple of couple of minutes um, as to how you got to where you got to and what made you want to teach. And then we'll pop over to Evelina, and then we'll pop over to Anna afterwards, and then we'll just start talking and have some fun. So Janelle, the floor is yours. Perfect. Sounds good. Hi, I'm Janelle Pickett. I teach at Burbank High School. I teach animation animation and sculpture. Um, how I got here? Um, well, I think my life has been a series of uh, fortunate mistakes. So <laughs> I can't say my pathway was meant to be here. Um, I, it just happened. And so I'm very fortunate for that. Um, my inspiration, I would say, uh, came from one of my college professors at Pasadena City College who screamed at his drawing um, and painting students. And I never knew that teachers could do that. So I realized I could probably do this as well. And so I really actually took his inspiration and um, and carried that into my class and try to bring a lot of energy to my students and um, make them excited about what they're creating. All right. You're up, Evelina. Tell us a little bit. Right. Sure. So yeah, hi, I'm Evelina Nazari. I go by she, her. I'm currently a PA for the Nickelodeon Archives and Library Department. And I guess maybe a little quick fun fact about me is that I really love knitting. I've knitted a couple of scarves up to this point, and I love it so much that I've pretty much dedicated a game demo that I made um, as a senior to knitting and mechanics related to that. So that was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Evelina. Hi, I'm Anna Martino, and I am the head of the Nickelodeon Archives and Library. I was a former teacher, a middle school, go middle school teachers, the best age ever. <laughs> um, and also a school librarian at the school I worked at. Um, just, I love animation and being a middle school teacher. Um, I was also an ed tech teacher when that whole start thing started. Some of you probably know that um, field of education. Um, it just kind of worked well into going into animation and archives. And so this is my next uh, step in my career as an archivist <laughs> librarian. And I've had two high school scholars from Janelle's program and Carson's program. Um, one of them is currently a junior TD in our animation tech department. And as you all know, Evelina just said, we just hired her this year. And so she's our newest addition. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, as, and, and to note, we also want to thank Amy Wu for that because she was also part of that Birdman Scholars program um, and also ran the mentorship program, which Shannon Huang also came through as well. So um, there's been a lot of hands um, in, in, in getting these young people ready and up uh, and their skills up to work in the building. Um, we've hired three, three uh, young women from Janelle's program last year. So that was our first real watershed moment. Um, just to speak briefly about the program and how it sort of started, about a decade ago, we decided at Nick that we wanted to have um, more outreach and more impact in the community. And the logical step, since we make cartoons, was to go find somebody else who wanted to make cartoons with us. Um, so, and we and find ways um, for our employees to give back in ways that were impacting and meaningful. So, um, Peggy Flynn, who runs arts at the district, Burbank Unified, put myself in touch with Janelle. Janelle and I sat down 
I think Janelle and I, it's fair to say, are both sort of out of the box thinkers. We're both a little wacky in sort of our approach to things. Um, and we sat down and we built out this program and it's been over a decade. Uh, first year, we had a series of master classes that focused on the key phases in the animation process. So I think nine or 10 classes that took place in the classroom. Um, and um, that were taught by Nickelodeon employees. We also each year have a film festival called the Bass, the best animated shorts. And then year two, we added the mentorship component and began pairing Nickelodeon employees with Burbank High School students. Uh, this year, we have a number of mentorship programs going on, not only in Burbank, but across Los Angeles and even up in Canada. Janelle's kids were partnering with on a series development mentorship program, a CG animation skills mentorship program, and a 2D shorts mentorship program as well. So we see a lot of each other. Um, so that's sort of the background. Um, Janelle, do you want to add anything? Um, well, actually, you know, you, you know what I'd love you to do for the teachers in the room is talk about how you started and built up this really thriving animation program. I mean, it's really, honestly, guys, I work with a ton of schools and this is really the sort of benchmark program. So Janelle, you know, if you could speak sort of to how that happened and that process. Absolutely, thank you so much for that compliment. Um, it's it really it reflects um, both on the district uh, support that I have as well as um, my fabulous students and how much hard work they put into and passion they put into their work. Uh, so I started at Burn Bank um, and we did have an existing animation program um, and I took over from a fabulous person who did um, actually was very generous in, in sharing what he had done. Um, and I, I worked with that and every year I made a goal to, to change something and develop it further. And I had to actually pull it out of uh, the videotape world. It used to be um, a lot of videotapes. Uh, so, uh, but we started out with no computers. So it definitely was, um, you know, what goes into animation. And uh, one beautiful thing about Burbank, it's very uh, arts focused. It's supportive of its CTE programs. Uh, so I had that support that uh, we could build and develop from there. So I'm, I appreciate that. So it's not just me. Um, so from there, I uh, then, uh, you know, looked at what could go into an animation program. And it's beyond um, just creating an animated short. It really is. What is the animation pipeline? What goes into um, animation careers? And students can come into class. Uh, yes, we still have kind of an arts basis to it. I, I do believe that um, in our arts, media, and entertainment sector of CTE, it's really strong that we have uh, we maintain the arts. Uh, basis, but there's so much room for students to come in and find their talents and their passions. Um, it's not just necessarily that they can draw, it's that um, that they can learn to draw, but they can also show that they're amazing leaders. Um, right now we're doing this great um, project with my animation one where it's good old fashioned stop action, but it's where they learn what studio roles that they could fill into. And out of the blue, second semester, all of a sudden I have these leaders that were quiet before and they find that, yeah, I could probably be a production assistant because I'm really good at wrangling all of these students to get their project done on time and um, and others who are really fabulous at editing. And, and as soon as you find that they um, can really speak to what they're interested in and open up possibilities, like show them the possibilities of what could happen and where they could go. Uh, they really, you know, they really definitely um, rise to the occasion and can, you know, develop amazing things. Um, so after uh, we kind of changed animation one and started adding to it and started growing um, and of course um, adding uh, your amazing support with uh, mentorships and bringing in guest speakers um, and getting out into the Burbank studios and showing students all the opportunities that are out there. Um, my advanced classes started to grow, which is great. So I have a very nice solid um, uh, group of advanced students that range from sophomores through seniors. So I was able to add uh, an animation three course. Um, I sat down with um, several uh, of industry prof uh, professionals. One great thing that uh, Burbank has done is um, we would, every year we would 
uh, sit down with uh, industry folks and they would give us feedback and I really listened to that and um, it was able to develop a third year and that's when you know it's really animation beyond the story how is animation used that is not just about animated shorts or show development um, and that's where students are able to really speak to games um, you know motion graphics VFX that type of thing and they're able to realize that they can use animation in other arenas and then we added one more class which I um, really love uh, which is I, I call the senior focus class and this came about because my students said can you I'm a senior next year can you just leave me alone <laughs> and let me do whatever I want I was like okay let's make a class out of that um, so I gave it a structure um, it's senior focus so they do get an entire year and uh, they plan what it is that they would like to create and um, that I do require uh, several portfolio pieces that are related to that um, but they really get to figure out what is that career pathway that they most um, you know want to venture towards what do they want to create because animation is a very long process um, so uh, that is where our show development mentorship is right now um, and those students are working for this entire year and really developing that pitch to the absolute most you know professional quality um, that they can rise to and um, I think they're doing great so we now have four years of animation um, at Burbank High School and uh, it's great it's really fun we have a, we have a really really good time that's incredible actually the, the fact that you have four years um, and, and I can't uh, and I can say that um, that what we've seen this past year especially in in our development series so we've we've partnered four of our development executives with uh, Janelle's high school and high school up in Canada and what we're seeing from these students I I, I think our development executives are just kind of blown away they're just mm -hmm. like, I mean, we're, we're coming with really professional pitch packets and Bibles, fleshed out characters, fleshed out worlds. Everything is really, really, really beautiful. So um, kudos to you and hats off there and your students doing amazing work. Speaking of that, Evelina, um, can you talk a little bit about your experience? So, you, you, you know, a little bit about how you how you found the animation program at Burbank High School and what the takeaways were from that as well for you? Yeah, for sure. So uh, for me, sort of getting into it, um, I knew I always really liked arts and I really wanted to be creative. And I finally had an elective slot for it. So I was like, I was more than happy to be able to like slot in animation one at the time. And I'm always so thankful for just being given that opportunity to take like animation one and later animation two with Jonelle, as it was just a really nice way for me to like express myself. I sort of was that like shy kid, but like I really got into it when I got to like draw and like work on my own animation and it really just like flourished from there and sort of like branching off of that, like all the experiences related to um, like the guest speakers that did get to come and like the mentorship program that also really blew my mind at the time as like a very confused 11th grader that like didn't really know what I wanted to do like it would be nice if I could do something artistic but like I don't really know that world so those like two classes, at least in my case, were uh, really great points to expose me to what that world could really be. Like with the example of the guest speakers, like, as you mentioned, there was like a lot of people from different parts of the pipeline. I remember some were like prop artists and some were story artists or some were like from other parts of the production pipeline. And it's just so cool, like adding a name to like what that job is. Like, uh, you know, I didn't really know it at the time, like, oh, there's a prop artist, like, that's a thing. It makes sense that that's a thing, but like, I just didn't know that. So sort of getting that, again, that exposure, I think was really fun and being able to just work on my own projects in animation too. Like I was really excited, um, sort of akin, I guess, to what Jenna was saying about the senior focus. I kind of got a little bit of that glimpse of an experience in developing my own animation that I wanted to do. And I was just like going 110% and like, putting all my time into it. And I remember I had a TA period and like I would come into Jonelle's class working on that animation. So uh, I think what Jonelle has been able to provide the kids and like how much it's grown from when I was in high school, like, so like what, at least seven years ago um, and how much more stuff there is now and how there's always like a next step with her classes has just been awesome to see like develop. And like, as you guys are mentioning, there's like three new mentorships and that's like so great that there's those like specializations 
So uh, overall, I, I think I've just been very grateful to get that exposure that I, I did very early on and sort of use that as like a point to kind of um, be strong and like for my job hunting, like show my own parents, like, oh, you know, this really is a viable career. So uh, with these experiences that I've had, so it's sort of been like a rock for me and like, and how I go forward for um, my career. Cool. Evelina was, um, by the way, in our first mentorship class, I think in 2012 and 2013. So she was part of the first year where we sat down. And one of the things I loved about that mentorship program from, from the onset was that it was pretty organic. It was pretty engaging. Um, and the thing that we really stressed was, you know, it doesn't end here. It doesn't end in May at the end of the school year. This is a relationship that you've developed with somebody. And, um, and you, you, you know, you can rely on that going forward. And a lot of these people, even though, you know, your mentor may not be at Nick, they may be somewhere else. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been really interesting to watch, especially as a lot of these mentees enter the workforce and where they are. And then, you know, you, you'll, you'll bump into somebody in the building and say, hey man, your kid just got hired at so-and-so. And they're like, really? You know, yeah, and, we, and yeah, we're, we're gonna try and get them over here. Or, hey, your kid just got hired here. And they're over at so and so now, and that so that's that's been really fulfilling, I think, for us. And I, I want to ask you a couple of questions. So you've actually had a lot of experience first with Shannon when when you agreed um, to be a host department for the Burbank uh, Work Scholars Program, which was a program we ran a couple summers, which took kids that were right out of high school and in that sort of summer between college and high school. And you were gracious enough to. Um, to actually say, yeah, I'll take on one of these students. Um, and then obviously now you've hired Evelina. So first off, why did you feel it was necessary? Or why were you agreeable to actually have that person over the summer? And two, since you've now worked with a couple of these young people, are, are there any traits or trends that you've noticed that, that they bring with them as a result of being a part of this program? And, and also as a result of having so much animation knowledge now? Um. Yeah, these are excellent questions. <laughs> I hope I answer all of them. Um, but um, as a former middle school teacher and also being a kid from public schools where not a lot, I was at a time where they just cut programs, right? So this would be an elective um, and they would always get rid of it. So, um, and just, you know, being a kid from immigrant parents and that, that background, I am always trying to give people opportunities where I can. Um, and so when Carson approached me, I was, it was like, no, I had no hesitation. I'm like, yeah, bring them. Um, because the other thing is about kids in that program and kids who are, you know, want to be part of, of these special projects at the end and after college, it's um, before college, um, you know, they want to be there, right? Like they've been working really hard and um, and I just know that they're gonna do their best and I'm here to mentor them. Um, and, you know, Shannon was, was my first student, high school scholar and, um, and then she was in Nick turn um, for two quarters in Amy's program and, and now we hired her. So seeing that journey, like it is a long game. Me and Carson were talking about this long game, you know, um, like you don't, you don't expect that. And then she, I knew in high school, she was awesome, you know, and she would reach out and visit the studio um, and email me and just kind of, we would check in and see how, how each other were doing. And that was also a no brainer to have her as a, like a Nick turn. Um, and she's, totally thriving. And that's what you want to see from your students, right? And former students. Um, and sort of some of the skills, well, like, like I said, they want to be there, right? And so, um, you know, they have the passion, but you, you do have to have patience because they are learning and you want to be there to, to guide them like, okay, time management skills, let's work on that, <laughs> right? Or, um, and have frequent check-ins with them and be available for them to, to ask as many questions as they want. Um, and also to see what they're passionate about and maybe steer projects towards that passion, right? So that's another thing. Like I always try, even just with my staff in general, if there's something they're interested in that can tie into archives world, you know, 
Um, and also exposing them to the fact that, oh, there's other jobs in animation. You don't just have to be an artist. You can do all sorts of other things, right? They do need archivists. They do need people wanting to preserve this, um, who understands like the animation pipeline or is willing to learn. Uh, so um, I hope I answered all your questions, Carson. <laughs> I think you actually answered the next one I was gonna ask you too. So we'll have to work on that. Um, <laughs> A little, a, a little bit of a sidebar. So, um, so, so Shannon, who now works um, um, on 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 our Adam Tech, who who we've mentioned a couple of times, um, literally when I think she might have been fourteen years old and came for her first tour of the studio, as we were walking through, she told me she was, she was kind of you know was, was like, "Hey, I'm I'm going to work here one day," and I said, and, and I was like, I, "I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that at all." And so to see you know that journey. Um, and to see that process happen has is, is been really pretty um, incredible. And when I found out that Ivy Penn, who's another young woman who hired this program, or Evelina or Shannon had been hired, it really kind of, it, you almost have to sort of take a moment and step back because you've watched this journey. And it is, to, to, you know, Dana's point, it is the long game. Like we've been at this for a while. And these students have made incredible films and they've won tons of awards, but now, there are colleagues. I mean, Shannon herself is serving as a mentor this year for our 2D mentorship program. So you wanna talk about full circle. I mean, that's really incredible, but there's also moments too when you're listening to her and you're like, that's a really good point. And I remember when you were 14 and just so excited about this and now you're here and you're helping. And so that's really, really kind of wonderful. Um, one of the things I think we need to talk about, because we talk about it all the time, every day, is COVID. Um, so, Janelle, quick question, for, not a quick question, for it's probably, there's probably a lot of, lot, lot of detail in this answer, but um, how did you pivot in COVID? How did COVID affect you initially? Um, how did you pivot? What did you learn? What are some of the, maybe some of the positive takeaways as well? Because there is, I think, some positive takeaways to all this. The pivot was huge. Uh, I think the two subjects I teach, uh, I, everyone kept asking me, how are you going to teach sculpture online? How are you teaching animation online? So it was a big pivot to figure that out, many sleepless nights. Um, the students, though, just rallied. They did great. Uh, we had to find technology uh, that could be done online. Um, I had to change, kind of went back a little bit, backtracked from the technology and found things that they could do a little bit more on paper and pencil and and just trying to find ways for them to connect because uh, they really were in this dark Zoom world uh, and trying to keep them together. Uh, however, the positives I think that are coming out of it is now we're connected to anywhere in the world that we want to be connected with. Um, I do appreciate this year that we had many meetings during class time, which we never were able to do. Yes, we had guest speakers come in during class time, but for me to have students actually be able to talk to professionals in that class time spot whenever we have a, you know, a meeting um, from week to week is fabulous. It's actually really helping um, with the consistency and that they're able to meet with their mentors uh, more frequently, which I think is great. Um, I kind of just talked to my class this week, though, about what they don't realize they missed last year, especially my students who came in from Animation One, um, they did miss that personal connection. There is something about being in a room, um, having to bring your little sketchbook and go to the studio and you're nervous and, and you're, you, you're meeting someone face to face and, and there's that whole uh, way you present yourself and you speak to people and, and how prepared you have to be for those meetings. Um, that is a special, that is a very special uh, thing that I, I'm hoping we get to back to soon. Um, being able to go out and um, see um, how the work environment is. I had a student ask me this week, they're like, um, do people in the animation studios just sit around like rooms with like huge computers? And I was like, no, they actually have offices. And, you know, you know just to be able to see, where do people, how do they, what do they do? Where do they work in? Um, what does the sound studio look like? Um, what does it smell like? Everything. It's just you take in those experiences. And I think that is really a spark that um, really helps the students. So I'm hoping we can pivot back towards that, but also keep some of these more convenient um, items. Um, I think students are 
already have a very strong sense of how to communicate online. So I'm very proud to say I made my first um, Discord um, server this week. So I am constantly learning and advancing too. And um, I'm actually having my former student, Shannon, show me how should we lay this out? Okay, so because that is how they're communicating. So they're doing that. But as a teacher, I know, wait, you don't know that you're missing this part too. You don't know that you need to have that um, experience where a guest speaker comes in and, um, you know, you can go up and talk to them and have that conversation face to face. So I think we have positives and then we're going to join those together soon so that we can have a you know, that well, well-rounded experience for them. Yeah, I, I have to think about too. So you guys sort of a little bit of a story here. When we were, when it was March, 2020 or April, and we were sort of in, in the sort of, we're coming around the, the bend of, of the end of that year's mentorship program, Janelle and I both kind of were like, well, how are we going to finish the year? We don't, we're not, nothing's happening. You know, we, you know, we were all, at this point, we were all COVID, you know, we were all, all newbies that world and didn't quite understand how any of that was going to work. Um, so a big shout out to our friends at Toon Boom who actually gave us software um, and let the students take that software home and finish those films. Um, and we, um, I don't think we understood how breakout rooms worked at the time. So we literally would just schedule meetings with mentors and mentees. And at one point this machine was going and that machine was going and we, I was rolling back and forth, you know, trying to figure out, um, you know, what was going on and what was happening. So um, that was a, that was a, a, that was a big shift, but I think we also just sat down and said, Hey, look, you know, this is the approach um, and let's, let's, let's go ahead and get this done. So that was, that, that, that was an interesting moment. Um, Evelyn, I want to ask you, I want to ask you, so um, as a mentee, what was your, what was your mentorship experience like? Uh, what surprised you about it? Uh, what were the real sort of positive takeaways and what also part two of that question is to anyone else who is going to be a mentee what would you recommend how would you recommend they approach that relationship yeah uh for sure so being a mentee at the time especially the inaugural year there was a lot of a uh, nerve excitement <laughs> going on um but it was really cool to be able to get like a lot of hands-on experience in being paired with a mentor at the time, my mentor was James Gallego, who was who still is like a background painter. So being able to like uh, be like paired with a mentor and him in that case, and like sitting down in the Nickelodeon studio, and like I would be presenting my like long term project, um, animation project, and like the progress that I had um, at every meeting, and just being able to see like uh, the feedback that he gave, whether it was like you know uh, reaffirming or maybe he had suggestions on how to improve. Um, anything in that realm was just overall very validating because somebody who is a professional is taking time out of their day to like look at my work or like, you know, whatever the case is. And just having that experience was super cool as like, again, as like an 11th grader and like just uh, being able to have that connection with a mentor. So that uh, in itself has been really great, that sense of directness. Um, and also, I guess I'm also thankful because it was before COVID times, but I got to also physically visit the studio, which in itself is sort of like an ambiance of awe. Like you just walk in, you uh, at the time I saw like, I think SpongeBob statue or like right in front of the doors. And then you walk in and it's like, oh my God, this is, this is the creative space. This is like where all the magic happens. <laughs> so being able to just like physically walk into that, it really like sets the tone. Like this is a professional environment. This is where people are working and, you know, having their day-to-day -day jobs. And it just was really, uh, again, a point of like good exposure to have very early on, which I'm also very thankful for. And uh, speaking to the second question for future mentees, um, I think I would say you should just try to approach it like you would like a, like a professional connection. Like this isn't, you know, just, you know, meeting your family member, though, you know, you may end up getting that close, but uh, this is somebody who you can be networking with, but also make like a genuine connection with. Like I still message my mentor from time to time and like send him like a, like a check in email, like, hey, you know, how are you doing? This is what I'm up to like every once in a while. So uh, I think approaching it that way will help like bring the most success because it'll also show the mentor that, you know, you're determined, you're passionate. This is something you want to do. And, you know, whether you know you want to be within like 
animation as an artist, or maybe you're not sure yet, but you just like it. In any case, I think that'll also kind of keep a mental note for your mentor to like, just look out for you, you know, they'll be happy for you. Like Carson was saying, like how some of the like employees are like, hey, your kid, you know, they got into here and et cetera. I think it'll just, again, establish a really nice connection and essentially like plant the seed of like wherever you'll end up being long-term. So sort of getting that right um, very early on will help just overall with the success of what you want to do. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues here. Um, um, and also, I, sorry, I had to go off camera for a second. We had a we had an issue with a puppy and a squirrel, um, and it seems to have been resolved, um, thankfully. Uh, but no, that was great. Um, yeah, it's 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 uh, the mentorship program is has been a really, I think, as fulfilling for the mentees as it has been for the mentors. I've had numerous conversations with people. Um, you know, who have said, hey, look, this is, I really want to thank you for, for, for giving me the opportunity to, to, to help shape young storytellers and, and help shepherd their creative visions, um, which I always find amazing because at the end of the day, they're volunteering on top of their already very busy workloads. But I think that creative people, um, I think everyone realizes what it was like to be 13 years old and, and like, how did they make that cartoon or how was that song recorded or how did that happen? And now we can go ahead. Um, I too miss the ability for uh, young people to come in and tour the studio. Uh, it is a wonderful place. Um, it really is one of those sort of frenetic hubs of, of um, sort of it, sort of all sorts of wonderful creative things going on all the time, conversations happening, um, many, many conversations about many things, everyone sort of allowed to have an opinion and, uh, the other thing too, I think we miss, and Evelina can speak to as well, is the mentorship meetings. We always had great cookies and snacks, um, right? That was a that was a lot of fun. I think all of us, I think all of us miss those. Um, Anna, you had mentioned um, a couple of things, but I wanted to kind of focus uh, on a couple. Since you have a pretty large team and you hire a lot of entry level folks into the studio, what are some skills if you taught high school animation? One, you would like to see students learn more about, but also too, what are some more of the life skills? You you mentioned some things like project managing, time management, things like that, but what are some really, as someone who's been a teacher and as someone who has actually now runs a department, you're in a really kind of an interesting place to talk about what you wish these kids would show up with. Um, gosh, it's kind of, I. I guess sometimes, right, like if they're too hyper-focused, like it makes them a bit inflexible. So maybe having a bit more flexibility and also, um, I mean, if, are you speaking of like hard technical skills? I, I, think, like, I think some of both. I mean, some, yeah. some, some tech skills, some sort of animation skills or animation knowledge or love for animation, then also, some of those soft skills as well. Yeah, because uh, um, because honestly, like, you know, maybe you you aren't um so pro, especially if they're in high school. So I don't expect them to be an expert on things, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, like having like an understanding, if they can get that idea of what a, what the animation pipeline is, um, mm -hmm. and how intense it can be. Um, and probably a broader picture of what it takes to make animation, you know, from um, the development side to uh, story and all of that and how it connects beyond just the production itself, um, that people outside of that production are also interested in the those that work and the assets that make up that work. Um, as an archivist, that's a lot of what we do is we source a lot of material for current productions and also, and Evelina has now been with us for a, a few months and so she sees it firsthand, but um, we're beyond just that just the production itself, right? Like we affect 
toys and what that group is doing. Um, uh, we affect what social media is doing. Um, you know, like we have to gather all that material and also understanding the importance of that material, like the naming of that material, right? Like don't just do a default of image 001, image 002, it doesn't help anybody, right? <laughs> so understanding that and understanding what, how every element like asset level is important and how you organize that is important. Like those are some of the big skills. Um, and then just also being able to um, ask for feedback, provide feedback and just being willing to communicate. Um, you know, don't be shy, even though I am a shy person and it's taken me this long to get comfortable <laughs> with things, even though I was a teacher, right? Um, uh, but, you know, being able to find their voice um, and, and act professionally um, and to see beyond sort of the task that they have at hand. Um, and also to just walk, be open to making connections with people and reaching out. Um, I think that's a great thing about our various programs is these students come in um, and maybe they've never had an opportunity to meet anybody in animation. But this is, you know, they have the opportunities with our programs to meet people and to talk to them and, and to raise their hand and, um, yeah, and learn more as much as they can. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, did that answer your question, Carson, and other people? If other people have questions, please say, please. Well, you, you totally asked the question that you got. I also have to say too that, um, for those of you who those of you who aren't familiar with the studio in the space, so basically, you come into this main kitchen, and then there's this big glass box, which is the um, archives, and then on his office is off to the side. But it's this incredible space with tons and tons of memories from everyone's childhood. And so, I'll, I'll give you. I was I was meeting with somebody who runs a nonprofit, and. Um, she kept staring over my shoulder. We were meeting in that kitchen and she kept staring over my shoulder at, at the wall. And uh, I and her team curated um, a um, exhibit for, uh, I think it was Hey Arnold. Um, and um, she finally stopped and said, I know this is really unprofessional, but that's my childhood in there. Can I just go in there and spend a few minutes and check everything out? <laughs> I said, sure, I'll go have a cup of coffee and come on back. And I think that's one of the really neat things about the Nick space and sort of cherishing, you know, our legacy in the, the animation world and the fact that you guys have the ability to do so. But that was a, was a really funny moment because she's like, you know, I'm really trying to be a professional here, but that's <laughs> really cool stuff in there. It was like, you know, original storyboards, pitched up and designs. And so, yeah, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't blame her. I said, go for it, have some fun. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I kind of, I think next, Janelle, I wanted to ask you, since you built this program out, um, what advice would you give to teachers who want to do the same thing? Um, you know, what advice would you give them to, to sort of maybe how to approach it, how to build it out, how to figure out the curriculum. Then there's the idea of, then there's also kind of the notion of how do you manage the minutiae around you, like the, you know, the 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 folks in admin and that aspect as well. So if, if you could speak to sort of how you would do this if you were doing it again. Sure. Uh, I would like to say, first of all, that animation, the concept of animation can be put into any existing curriculum. You can have a science class and the students can uh, storyboard and animate, you know, the, the division of a cell. Um, you could have a history class and they could have a pre-recorded story and the students create an animation to that. So the concept of animation doesn't necessarily have to be a formal um, section. You, you might really find, you know, if you give those types of assignments to students in other classes, you know, like English is script writing, that's writing, you know, um, take those stories, have your students then draw pictures to it, make comic books to it, um, provide those kind of opportunities. And you're, you're going to find some students coming out of the woodwork that are, um, as you said, Anna, 
a lot of us are pretty shy. Like I would say that my, my students, they're the introverts and many of them tell me, um, this is the class I come alive, but in my other classes, I'm not so alive. You know, I, I'm not this personality. This is how I, I want to, this is who I am. But in your other classes, they might be a little bit more, um, reserved. So I would encourage everyone to use this as an, an excellent way to, um, bring out those, um, others, those students who have those, um, interests and can actually really flourish in other academic classes. Um, to start out with, um, uh, animation is just, it's wide open. So, uh, as I said, to start a, a class that maybe they, um, have just an overview of the animation pipeline, which is what I try to do in my animation one. I call it my crash course in everything animation. Um, so those students who come in and love to draw, they're, they're happy when we first start out, but then I'll say, okay, we're gonna cover everything. So I'll have other students who are really happy when we you know, can integrate sound and we get to, this, to the editing and we get to um, storyboarding and writing and, um, and we you know, learn a bit about animation history. I have some students who all of a sudden they're just like history buffs and they'd love to see the old animations. And um, so just realize that animation is a is a large world um, and there's many ways of putting it into um, into a school. Um, to start your very first animation class as far as uh, administration goes, um, I've been very fortunate to have very supportive um, principals and administration and at the district level as well. Um, I always say I have these crazy ideas and they're just like, okay. And so uh, it, if you can find that support and say, okay, I would like to start this one animation class and um, it can be done without computers to start out with. Uh, in fact, um, much of what I used to do in the computer lab, I am finding my students more and more are using their own phones, um, the stop motion apps and the drawing tools that they have are um, great. And that means they're mobile. Uh, they're, they're able to interact with each other as, uh, while they have their, you know, digital um, uh, devices out. So there are possibilities to do it without the technology. Technology is a tool and it's ever changing. Um, if you teach the base, the base of what it's all about, that's what's gonna carry through for the students. If you create, you know, the, the base storytelling, the base artwork, um, the base skills uh, for communicating and uh, those types of skills, that's gonna transcend and push them towards their career uh, goals. And the technology is, is always something we're just always going to keep up with. So yes, it's great that, and we're very blessed that we had a, a, an amazing grant that we were able to get a brand new lab and, and Nickelodeon um, donated our Cintiqs and the students find those absolutely precious. And um, that is awesome. So if you can build a lab, um, but you can do it without it. You can start out with, there's a lot of, that you can do um, that will teach everything about the animation pipeline without necessarily having to start out with, you know, everything shiny and new. Um, and then I would also say, as you grow, don't expect to do everything all at once. So at first I kind of did, I was like, oh, I have to, you know, pull this all together and you just, you have to slow down, which is, I have to tell myself to slow down. And I would try to just make a goal for every year. Um, so I was like, what do I envision that I would like to have done by the end of this year? So, um, some of the goals I put, you know, in front of myself were, um, I'd like to create a sound studio, um, because, um, I have students who, um, want to use sound, but it, there's copyright issues, right? And I have students who are, oh, we got choir programs, we got music programs. Those students like build it and they will come. So uh, we found a little closet somewhere and we cleaned it out. And, um, and that was, that was what I worked on all year. And I just had to wait, you know, like it was little by little and, and until it got to where it's now functioning and, um, and it, it's kind of cross curricular because I have my tech students, my stage tech students come up and they set up all the microphones for me. And um, I have students who are in choir who, um, you know, they love to um, do the voiceovers and the singing. And then the, another one I did was I was like, I think we need a VR station. And that was inspired by one of the talks we had about um, Animation 3 and what they needed. And uh, yeah, VR is a tool. Let's do it. And I knew nothing about it, but I had to research it and be like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I'm working on, you know, for this year. 
So just kind of just know that you're going to try some things and it's going to work or it's not. Reevaluate, make your goal for the next year and just let yourself slowly build and build. Um, and then, then you'll look back and go, okay, wow, that was a great journey. And um, it worked out and um, everyone helps you on the way. The students help you. They, they help me research and um, industry professionals will give you their input. And um, I would say that's, that's kind of the approach I took. It didn't happen all at once. It just was a process by process, year by year. And um, once again, having supportive administration to say, okay, and um, they're happy with the results. So that's awesome. I do, I do say too, though, I mean, you know, there, there were moments, I remember and to, to, to the folks out here when we were building this, the building up this, this, this partnership, I would call Janelle and say, hey, we have this at the studio. We have these the animation tables or we have, you know, these pens or, or whatever it would be. And Janelle would be like, I'll be there this afternoon. And so she would show up in a pickup truck and we would just load up a pickup truck. And so there was always that. And there was always that idea of like, let's scrounge and scrape and what we can get together. Fortunately, the the IT department at Nickelodeon has been really very generous and has allowed us to salvage a lot of our outdated, not outdated, let's say our gently used equipment. And so, and so, and so a lot of animation studios across Los Angeles, Janelle's program uh, specifically have, have benefited from their generosity and their, I think their foresight. Um, one of the things I want to ask you, Anna, because you were a teacher and we heard this from Janelle earlier was what was that, was there any sort of transformative moment as a student was there sort of some, was there a teacher who basically had a transformative moment in your life that led you to, I guess, just sort of think differently or maybe even take on this career? But was there that teacher who had that moment or were there many that had that, that had that positive impact and that change on your life? Can you speak to that? Is that to me, Carson? Uh, yeah. I said Evelina. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was, I was looking at you. Yes. <laughs> Because, that question, because because you became a teacher as well so I, I think that's interesting like was there what was that was there that moment or that person I did have that person in actually middle school my history teacher because like I said I was a really quiet kid and I would just be one of those kids who was just like this is the assignment okay let me do the assignment um, but I don't know what she saw but she took me aside and she was like, hey, this is, this is like really easy for you. And I think we need to check on some things. And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> Cause no one had ever noticed, you know, would notice me cause I was just so quiet. So she was the one person who made me go, oh, okay. Like maybe I should be a bit more vocal and not just sit in the back. Um, and then, so as an introvert, I tend to notice the introverts, right? Um, and so as a teacher, that was also my focus as well. So I tend, tended to have students come to me who were like really into robotics or really, really into, you know, art and libraries and and very bookish, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I could see an opportunity to, to kind of foster that interest as a school librarian, I would. Um, and then later as like a the robotics mentor at the school I was at. Um, and then one of the things like teachers, you do not know your impact, right? So I taught this student in middle school and one day I was in like an internship fair talking and I look at my screen because it's Zoom time and there is my former seventh grader saying how he's studying to be a librarian and getting his master's in library and information studies <laughs> right degree and is like Oh, thanks, Miss Martino. Of course, he still called me Miss Martino. And I was like, no, no, you have to call me that anymore. We're now colleagues. Um, so hats off to all you teachers who notice those kids and foster those students. And you don't know, 10 years later, here they are sitting in front of you saying, hey, you inspired me to follow this path. 
and and here I am, and now I'm your colleague. <laughs> it's, really, it's really amazing, and and just it's just such a heartwarming thing. And kudos to all of you who are still teaching, especially during this time. Like, whew, oh my gosh. That's, that's yeah. That's that 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 must have been an amazing moment. I mean, it is. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, even looking at Evelina right now, I'm still thinking, and 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 the fact that she's still slightly uncomfortable calling Miss Pickett Janelle. <laughs> it's sort of it's sort of a really kind of a charming moment as well. Um, one of the things um, I think it's really difficult for a lot of us. I mean, I was fortunate. I had parents who were who were sort of not in the arts, but were around the arts and loved the arts. And so they they always thought that a career in the arts was something you should do. And it was, but for a lot of people, that's not obviously um, on their mind. Um, Cause we, we, you know, you may have grown up five miles from a studio, had no idea what actually happened in there. It's just, just some big walls and a lot of trucks driving in and out. And maybe there's a movie star in there or somebody who makes really cool cartoons, but you, you don't know anything more than that. So one of the things I always did um, whenever we would get in front of parents was I would, um, discuss the rates in the union contract for storyboard artists. And I would explain, this is how much a storyboard artist makes per week. Let's do some math. Let's multiply it by 52. Let's talk about healthcare. Let's talk about, let's talk about benefits and things like that, because I want people to realize that there are careers in the animation business. Narbe has mentioned in here that there's tons of careers and there are, you know, only maybe a quarter of the people, maybe a third of the people in the building at Nick actually draw for a living. There's all these other jobs. But what I'm intrigued about uh, is a question for you, Alina. Is is you mentioned that point where you said, okay, this can be a job. Was it was it difficult to convince your parents to let you go down this path? Were they like, hey, become a dentist or become a doctor or become a lawyer? Like, was there that was there that moment where you had to sit down and say, like, hey, I can do this? And I'd, I'd, I'd love you. I'd love for you to talk about that a little bit if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so there definitely was that element there. Um, my family and I guess typically those surrounded by me going into the arts wasn't really a thing, nor I, I mean, I guess they weren't really in there. So there was no exposure to that. So uh, I, I definitely had that talk actually starting to um, when I was going to university, I studied game design. So I definitely at the start had that talk for that. I was like, okay, I can, I, I want to do this and here's my reasons why. And then after I graduated, I was like, you know, I'm really drawn back to animation still. My experiences from the mentorship and I was thinking about all that. I was like, okay, I want to pivot. I want to go back somehow into animation. And I like was really drawn to being like a PA or working in production management. And, you know, my foot is now in like in the archives, but um, yeah, I definitely had to like really make my case um, very early on. And like, I had to do all the research and like, basically it was like a big research project and being like, okay, this is what, well, you know, what these people make. And, you know, I have like these connections on LinkedIn, which help show that, you know, they are making a living off of it. So it's a lot of like proving your case, but, you know, sometimes that's what you have to do if you're really passionate and there really isn't that kind of exposure around you. Um, you just have to put in the work and, I know my parents definitely came around like afterwards, like there was the initial hitch, but like once I was like into my education in that sense, like they came around pretty quickly. And even now they're like, oh, okay, you know, wow, you're making a living off this, you know, you're, you're happy, you're passionate about what you're doing. So um, that's all they really care about. So yeah, it's definitely a big initial learning curve, but um, after being able to jump over that, really make my case and just show that I'm putting the time into this, I think they came around. So, oh, yeah, that's cool. It 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 is it is a, it is a tough thing because it's like people get paid to draw. Like I, I always try and sort of whenever I'm 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 talking to kids, I'm like, hey, you know, you if you do you like to draw, yeah. And people here get paid to draw, and they and they can eat eat a lot of free cereal, and they can play video games, and I like doing that too. Okay, cool. So you know, you don't have to abandon um, that thing. But then again, but then again, there's also all of these other wonderful jobs within the animation business. We had a couple questions. One was from Joshua Jackson. Joshua, I can't answer that question about glitch text. I, you know, I, I probably, I'm thinking the same thing you're thinking. So I do want to address that because you popped that in there. Um, and, uh, but I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know about a further order of glitch text. You would have to probably write a letter to somebody at Netflix or uh, at, the, at the top of a, top of the brass in Nickelodeon. Um, 
but then again, there's a couple of questions. Um, I, I want to open this up. Do you guys have any advice or tips um, for getting your foot in the door? Like, how would you approach getting a job in the animation business if you don't know anybody? Maybe, Evelina, since you just got a job in the animation business, this might be a question for you. Yeah, if you want, I could hop into that first real quick. Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, a really good um, big step you can do um, for anyone, whether you're a student or maybe even an educator and you're trying to get those resources for your classroom is just like LinkedIn. Because <laughs> from what I hear, a lot of the um, animation industry is smaller than people think. So a lot of people know a lot of other people. So if you can, you know, be genuine, state your intentions, you know, write a quick little note um, and connect with like potential people. Uh, I think in that way you can first build your network, but also, you know, express your intentions, put your name out there because uh, something I remember hearing very early on is like, if you don't, you know, let someone know what your goals are or your intentions, you know, how are they supposed to help you out or how are you supposed to get anywhere? So by first, you know, being able to put yourself out there, um, I think that's one way you can help um, get like either break in or, you know, with any of the career goals related to animation. Uh, another thing is there's a lot of great like organizations um, that have as of late like risen. Mm -hmm. And I know there's like uh, Rise Up, I know Black and Animated, We uh, there's Animations, um, Asian Queens, et cetera, et cetera. There, there are so many great organizations that are popping up that are like here to really like give a lot of exposure to the animation industry, but also like they host a lot of panels and have a lot of guest speakers and et cetera. So I think also just being a part of that, even if you're not like a very active member, but even if you're listening in, it shows that, you know, you're taking the time to kind of either stay current or just you know hear what other people's stories and at the end of the day it's that kind of like engagement and just sort of uh being active on that end i think will help slowly get your name out and i know uh, in my case i also tried volunteering as well um yeah. there was like animation magazine had their summit that i got to like volunteer at so again uh, all in the name of like putting yourself out there slowly step by step, you know, if you're planting the seed, you know, you're watering it, you know, with that analogy, you'll, you'll eventually get to where you want to be. So it's just a matter of time. It's actually a great, great uh, uh, analogy. Is there anything to add to that, Anna? What do you think? No, I think Evelina hit it, you know, like I'm part of Women in Animation. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> um, and LinkedIn is a great place. Twitter, I mean, um, TikTok, honestly, TikTok, <laughs> there's like a lot of animators on there. Um, but just show your interest. And okay, so here's like one of the things, right, about breaking into entertainment industry is like, it's who you know, people always say, but also just try and apply. If you have the skills that are transferable, go for it. I am one of those people who didn't know anybody in animation, didn't know anybody in entertainment, in, in the entertainment industry. That just wasn't my world, you know? So I just kind of went for it and was very, very lucky that I landed where I did. And now I'm at my dream, dream job. So um, yeah, just like Evelina saying and, and Janelle saying and Carson saying, you just kind of put yourself out there, show your interests and, and you know, uh, reach out to people who you might be interested in and don't be rude. Please be nice to them. There's some people who are so rude. <laughs> Just be kind. <laughs> that's a, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's an appropriate life lesson as well, right? Be kind, stay the course. Um, well, we want to thank everybody. We want to thank uh, Janelle and Evelina and Anna for their time today. I want to thank Brooke for allowing us to, to sort of sit in front of you and tell us a little bit about what we've done and to celebrate this wonderful program, the fact that we gave students uh, this opportunity and they gave us the opportunity in turn to, to go ahead and mentor and teach. So it's been um, fulfilling, I think, and, and on, on all sides of the coin. So thank you all. Enjoy your Saturday and we will see you guys all very soon. Take care, everybody. Be well. <laughs>